It's June 2020. Let's go back 20 years when three Ukrainian organizations decided to band together to reach an agreement with the federal government on internment. The Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association, which had done advocacy work in the 90s, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, which had turned a new page on cooperation, and the Shevchenko Foundation, and together they worked hard for an agreement. Watch this video. My name is Andrew Ladyshevsky. As president of the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko, I was involved in the creation of the Canadian First World War Interment Recognition Fund. When I was six years old, my father, Miroslav, took us to the Mount Revelstoke and Castle Mountain internment camps. He explained to us Ukrainians had been imprisoned there. Now, as a six-year-old, I didn't fully understand what that meant, but I knew, tramping through the bush with my father, that it was important. I stumbled across my father's archives. It's a collection of stories about the first 30 years of Ukrainians in the city of Calgary. Also in these archives were many stories about Ukrainians and others who were interned in the First World War. In the 1990s, the Shevchenko Foundation began providing grants to the Ukrainian Civil Liberties Association for the installation of plaques in internment sites. At the same time, the foundation provided research grants to the Ukrainian Canadian Congress for work to be done by Professor Bohdan Kordan. In November 2001, a committee was formed with the Shevchenko Foundation represented by myself, the UCCLA represented by Dr. Lubomir Lutsyuk, and Paul Grod, then the VP of the UCC, representing the Ukrainian Canadian community. A draft of a document called Terms for an Agreement and Reconciliation between the Ukrainian Canadian community and the federal government Canada was presented to Minister Sheila Kops. Little did the three of us know that these negotiations would take place over seven years and with the help of Member of Parliament Inky Mark, who had tabled a private member's bill regarding the internment of Ukrainian Canadians in the First World War. In early 2004, we began negotiating with the new Liberal administration headed by Prime Minister Paul Martin. Inky Mark's bill was tabled in October 2004 as the Ukrainian-Canadian Restitution Act in place before Parliament. After extensive negotiations, on August 24, 2005, we signed an agreement in principle with the Minister of Multiculturalism, Mr. Chan, and witnessed by the Prime Minister and the Heritage Minister and several representatives of the Ukrainian community. The agreement called for $2.5 million to be paid to the Ukrainian community from the Acknowledgement, Commemoration and Education Fund. We became aware that Bill C-331 was potentially going to be ruled out of order by the Speaker of the House of Commons. Through a standing committee, an attempt was made to fix deficiencies, and on November 23, 2005, an amended version of Bill C-331 passed a unanimous resolution of the House of Commons. A few days later, the Senate passed the amended Interment of Persons of Ukrainian Origin Restitution Act just prior to the fall of the Martin government. The Honorable Jason Kenney was appointed the Secretary of State with responsibility for multiculturalism. Paul Grodd, Dr. Lechuk and myself presented the Conservative government with our revised proposal. 17 months later at the Stanley Barracks in Toronto, I signed the Endowment Contribution Agreement with the Federal Government of Canada as witnessed by Paul and Lubomir. $10 million was transferred in perpetuity to the Shevchenko Foundation. This began a 15-year mandate to fund initiatives to commemorate Canada's first national internment operations. In addition, $2.5 million was pledged from the National Historic Recognition Program to fund exhibits at Cave and Basin in Banff National Park, Fort Henry in Kingston, Ontario, and the Citadel in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Through negotiations with three Canadian Prime Ministers, six Ministers of Heritage, five Secretaries of State for Multiculturalism, and seven Directors for Multiculturalism, we were able to achieve an honourable settlement with the creation of the Canadian First World War Interment Recognition Fund. I've had the opportunity to go back to Castle Mountain and Mount Revelstoke. 
I truly believe that we have begun to honor the memory of the men, women, and children who were imprisoned or had their civil rights abused during Canada's first national internment operations. What's the legacy from the fund? Well, over $3 million has been provided to grantees in several dozen grants. We've spent thousands of dollars on research, tens of thousands of dollars on educational materials, and other grants. But one maybe is worth highlighting. We did give a small research grant to the Morrissey Interment Camp Excavation, where a young researcher was interested in the subject matter. That researcher then enthusiastically went on to do her master's and has recently completed her PhD in archeological excavations regarding internment camps. That researcher is Dr. Sarah Ballou. Her work now appears at the Canadian Museum of History in Ottawa, where in a central casement, a barbed wire cross and escape tunnel shovel that she found figures prominently for all Canadians to see, and the work in all of these areas is only beginning. 